Hey, what's going on, guys? Today it's just gonna be a really quick, really quick video. I'm just so I put one out there because you know I've been been working hard for uh, exams and things like that. But I'm gonna do a really quick video and um, clear up a couple of bugs we had in the last uh, last video. So one thing I forgot to mention is that if we hop over to our game over script, um, we set the time scale to zero, and then we have this button down here to retry, which reloads the level. However, this does not reset the time scale. So what we need to do is copy up in here, paste this, and then change this to one. Also, all that does is it'll, it, it will reload the level and then set the time scale back to one, which is normal time. Okay, and then this is uh, another small thing here is when um, the player dies, um, we still have the error where um, it would check for the player even though the player doesn't exist. And we got rid of it, but then we got we then we uh, implemented the new physics, um, which is this one, the enemy too far from player, and uh, this also checks the player. So this was returning an error. So once again, we'll just do um, if player does not equal no, then return that check. Else, we're just going to return. Uh, Let's actually, you know, let's return true because this way, if there's no player, then all the enemies will think they're too far, and then we can go ahead and destroy all the enemies that way. Okay. Um. And then uh, now the next thing we want to do is a little bit on animation and uh, um, animation controllers. So we'll go ahead and make a new script and we'll call it. Yeah, I'm running a, a scan in the background, so it's a little slow today, but I'll try try to keep it doable. Um, we're going to make a new script, and we're going to call it um, Player Animation. Okay. All right. First thing we're gonna do is make a public uh, animation control, uh, not controller. What is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, it's animator. That's what it is. Animator. And we're gonna call it anim. Now, um, a lot of the animation stuff using the new mechanism system and Unity 4, there was a huge improvement to the to the animation system, and it's made it a lot easier. And what I'm what I'm about to show you guys is something super easy compared to what you used to have to do to program animation, and now it's it's really really nicely done. So, uh, what we'll do is make a public uh, void update. Uh, this is just the one that runs every frame. And also, before we get too far into this, we're also going to need access to that. Um, public platformer motion as well. And now we'll do um, anim dot set float speed, um, and we'll do motion dot um, direction dot x. Uh, we'll do dot normalize dot x. I'll explain this in a little bit. Then we're gonna do. Um, uh, we need to do an anim dot. Um, we'll have an animation for jumping as well. So we'll do um, set trigger. And obviously we don't want this every frame. This is just for testing purposes. Um, and then also we can use an anim dot trigger uh, shoot, and then we're going to need to reset these triggers as well. So we'll do reset trigger jump anim dot reset trigger shoot. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this this uh, error here. We'll do. Uh, make this public okay um, now what I want to do is um, a better way of uh, 
um, of having this script to manage everything is to have it accessible by all the other scripts. So we'll do we'll have a public void jump anim, which will uh, do this here. Now I'm not uh, overly familiar with triggers actually, so we're going to go ahead and have to play around with it to see if, if we uh, um, get the w get it the way we want to. Public void shoot anim. I'm not sure if you're supposed to reset it right after you set it. Uh, if not, we'll go ahead and and toy around with it. Although we do want to update our speed every single frame because that is um, it could be changing every frame. Okay. Um, now in our pla uh, player combat script, and here once we do our fire, we will do a uh, get component of player animation dot shoot anim, and then in our where is it? In here, is this where we do our jumping? Ah, oh, yes, it is. Okay, in here we'll do our uh, get component player animation not jump anim okay um, now I'm going to pause the video for a second while I load up Unity we've done all the co uh, programming and obviously it was extremely easy for us to set this up and that's because of we have a n really nice um, animation node based editor in Unity that we can use that'll um, actually do stuff based on that simple programming we just did so I'm gonna pause this real quick okay so we're back and um, um, I'm debating I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, hold on a second Okay, I'm, I'm debating if I'm gonna go ahead and upload um, this asset. I might as well. I was thinking about just uploading this uh, entire project um, on the Access Store once I finish with the entire tutorial series, um, where you can get download the stuff. But I'm um, I'm not sure yet. Um, so I've gone ahead, and this is a. Uh, if you haven't been to my po portfolio, this is Herbert from the game Herbert's Adventure that did not even get past uh, <laughs> like the very early stages of development. Um, I like continue it um, soon, but it's been fully animated as you can see um, in here. Uh, here's its, its shooting animation, his idle, his walking, and this is a jump. Looks a little interesting, but it, look, it looks um, good in game, <laughs> in Herbert's adventure at least. Now, uh, it doesn't know when to play these, and so what we have to do is inside animation, I'm in a folder called controllers. You right click. Do you create, uh, what is it, animator controller on M9 Cubeman, and you just click on it like that. Then you can double click on it, it'll load up the animator. Um, now I've gone and added a basic little thing, but these don't really mean anything. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete these now. And uh, if you don't, if yours is empty, you should just have a just in, in any state here, is because I was toying around with it. Um, you will have to go in here and just drag in your animations manually like that and so we have our idle, our walk, and our jump animation and the orange one is by default, you can change the default by right clicking on it and do um, set as default um, and so let's go ahead and make our first transition, right click on idle make transition and click on walk um, and by default it'll automatically play the idle, the idle because that's the default then this transition says once it's over go ahead and play the walk animation uh, and we don't want that. We want it to um, only play the walk animation if here's our conditions here in our inspector. Change uh, actually down here first before we go ahead and do this. Remember those um, strings we made, the triggers in the float. We have to make those in here as well. So we'll make one called speed, and then a second one. We'll call it jump, and then what was our third one again? Was it shoot? think so. Uh, speed, jump, and shoot. Yeah, okay, good. Um, and then we'll go, now under our conditions, we have all this other stuff here. We'll do speed uh, is greater than zero. Uh, yeah, we'll do greater than zero. In fact, I'm going to change it to 0.1, just so we have a little bit of threshold there. 
Um, from our walk, we can go ahead and go back to our idle. Um, if the speed is less than 0.1, um, and then our jumping, we want to be able to jump from either state. So I'm just gonna organize this a little bit. We could transition from here, um, and we want it to go to our jump when our jump has been triggered. Same from here, we want to be able to transition from our walking to our jumping. And then we want to be able to um, go back to our walking or idle from here. And so we'll do, under our conditions for our jumping, once it's done, um, it can go back. And if our speed is less than 0.1, or if it's done and our, uh, our speed is greater than 0.1, go back to our walking animation. And so that's why we've got a nice little uh, um, animation system here, and it's a lot better. You used to have to go ahead and program all of this in, whereas it's a lot easier to do it with this uh, node-based system here. Next thing you wanna, you're going to want to do is click a, click a plus on this layers right here to make make a new layer. And uh, I didn't mean to actually do it. Here we go, minus. Uh, mine's called the attack layer, and right here we just have our cube man shoot pistol, and he's by uh, he's defaulted. So we'll go from make a transition to any state to do our shoot and then we'll go ahead and uh, click on this here and we'll do if our shoot is triggered let's go ahead and save this go ahead and game and obviously I had to re-drag on all this other stuff again and let's go ahead and see see what, what happens in game so right off the bat you can see his head is bobbing which is its idle animation we can walk um, Okay, um, so far, only our idle is working. Let's go ahead and check out this uh, animation tab. Oh, what's this? Player combat. Ad oh, <laughs> that was interesting. I totally forgot. This is a, always something for me. Um, the stupidest things. I forget to attach the script to it. So let's go ahead and drag on the animator component, as well as the platformer motion component. We'll hit save. We'll go in here and and still nothing. Uh, um, in here, we if we press A, we go to the left. If we press D, we go to the right. However, at the end of every frame, we're resetting that back down to zero after we process the motion. So this guy's picking up zero every time. Instead of um, having this guy um, process the speed, what we'll have to do um, is a public void. We'll do update speed, and then we'll pass in a float of speed, and we'll put in speed here. Okay, and now in here we'll do a, um, before we set the x to zero, we'll do a get component of player animation dot update speed, and then we'll do direction dot x. And I am going to go back to using the normalized one. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our our jumping working, our jump animation. Uh, still nothing for our shooting and our walking. Alright, one thing you'll notice, if I can walk to the right, it plays the animation. If I walk to the left, it doesn't. And that's because of... Uh, um, the way we've set this up here. So we want to do if our speed is greater than um, greater than zero, and then we'll do or um, if our speed is less than negative point one point one for this. And here we'll have to do the same. Sorry about that. I forgot the negative key was my um. Uh, my pause and play button. So, anyways, this is what it looks like. To go back to our walking from our jumping, we have to exit and our speed less than 0.1, um, or greater than 0.1, really. Or if our speed is less than negative 0.1. And hold on while I um, turn that off. And now I can go ahead and actually put the negative sign in. Alrighty. And then same for this guy. Uh, if our speed is less than 
um, negative 0.1 or if our speed is greater than 0.1 then go into a walk animation so if I hit play I can go in here and walk left walk right and it still works and we'll go ahead and make a transition to there and we'll do uh, on our exit time we'll hit play so we can shoot we do our shoot animation we can walk we can jump we can do all of it at the same time So there we go. And I think that's about all, all I wanted to cover. So that's a really quick rundown of the animator system and how to program um, animation. It, I mean, we did this in like, what is this, 30 lines? Whereas if I were to actually hard code this based on Unity 3.x um, animation system, uh, it would probably take like, I'd say at least 100 lines. And if you can do it in less, it's, it's a lot better than... Um, you know, then having a whole bunch of code because you have to go ahead and do that for every single um, enemy or every single player, whatever. And um, this is a lot simpler.